likely to understand. We had no chance of achieving our goal until we became more honest with ourselves. So, our quest became a personal and ethical one. We quietly and individually sought to become better human beings than we had been. As solutions to the theoretical problems gradually became clear, we were led to develop a method of teaching that emboldened people to see their own lives clearly and honestly. It began in response to requests of psychologists and leaders of business and other organizations. That led to teaching groups of individuals and couples, and then to training others to teach also. We called ourselves the Arbinger Institute. To our amazement, we found right from the first that almost all of the participants in our classes experienced, in small degree or great, something of a fundamental change a change of heart, without guidance or pressure from the teacher, but simply by considering the true stories and explanations that we shared. The participants would often realize the truth about their part in a troubled relationship, and often they would want to share the story. Their complete honesty with themselves enabled them to see how they had been responsible for the thoughts and feelings that had been troubling them. In the discovery of the truth, and then, in the telling of it, their hearts began to change. You might think that studying this topic would be a somber experience, but it wasn't. Those who listened to the personal stories responded with laughter. They laughed joyously rather than derisively, not at those who told their stories, but with them, for they recognized themselves in each other's stories. Every story was, except for the details, their own story too. By resonating with the storyteller, they recalled situations in their own lives that they had previously not remembered truthfully. They discovered with relief and joy that their fears about themselves and resentments toward others, the very emotions that had troubled them, were gone. I have tried to write this book in the spirit of the Arbinger classes I have described, partly by including a number of the many rich stories that individuals have shared over the course of nearly a quarter of a century. If you ponder them, these stories are likely to serve you better than the explanations that connect them. Sometimes I've changed names and other details, including names of my children, to protect the privacy of individuals. And your own stories, which will come to you with the force of truth, will be most important of all. Moreover, the effect of your own stories will be enhanced if you write them down. Pieces of personal history, honestly written, can work therapeutic miracles. If you are like the participants in the classes and scores of thousands who have read the materials I will share, you will begin to see your own life differently as you contemplate what you read, and you will feel yourself being changed in the process. I should add a word about the explanations that surround the stories. They make this book different from other works on similar topics. As people gain a deep, true understanding of their attitudes and actions, their self-deceptions fade, and they can begin to see clearly how to move forward on their own. On the other hand, if they're merely told what to do, they can't act independently. They must either blindly accept what they've been taught or just as blindly reject it. A correct understanding of why we feel and think and act as we do helps set us free. Developing that understanding is the point of the explanations. It is because we want to promote this independence that my colleagues and I regard ourselves as ordinary teachers rather than givers of advice. When people obtain their own independent understanding of the truth, they can go beyond what they've been taught. If a price must be paid to obtain that understanding, then a teacher who cares will not deprive the student of the opportunity to pay that price by making the way forward seem easier than it is. My heart goes out to two kinds of readers, both of whom may have particular difficulty coming to grips with what I will say. First are those who want to deal with the material intellectually, as a way of muffling their own inner voice. This has sometimes been my own besetting self-deception. To think self-understanding is to be achieved by reason rather than by honesty. It has often kept me in my own...